<laughs> it's time now for Great Day Books. And our friend, Lori Fazio from RJ Julia Booksellers is here. Yeah, we're chatting about our book club's uh, read, Spare. Melissa Cole is also reading it along with us, and she's here to join in the conversation, too. We're going to talk about the book first, because then we can get to some selections for Valentine's Day. Yeah. I think uh, you're okay about the book. I'm okay about the book. I think that there's, you know, there's three sides to every story. Okay, right? we're getting one his side, side which their I'm side, totally, and then the truth. Right, which I'm bu totally buying into his side. I am too. I and there was a, I mean, I haven't watched a lot of the other things about. I have not you know, either. So this was kind of my first go at it, and I'm learning a lot, and I'm finding it very interesting. Very right. interesting. So spare. And let's just talk about that. The, the, if you don't know, that he, I thought that was a little shocking, that he was called the yeah, spare right. openly by his family. Like that yeah. was just like. Air and spare. I thought it was kind of a, a joke on the title, but no, that was actually what he was called. That's actually what it was from called. The time I didn't was, realize that either. That that's a real thing. Like, mm -hmm. oh, you're the air, you're the spare. You get a better bedroom, you get the spare. That's kind of a weird way to grow up. Yeah. Yeah, I think so too. And I, I feel like, I mean, I do feel for him. Yeah. You know, I mean, I'm, I'm interested in, you know, when people talk about the Royals, I'm interested in it. I don't, yeah, I'm not obsessed over it, but I enjoy hearing about it, but then I can let it go. Yeah. So. Coming into the book, I didn't think I was going to like him. Same. And now, so far, we're only into part two. We haven't yeah. introduced Megan into the book yet. <laughs> right. Right. But I'm um, like Chelsea. I'm really enjoying her. I kind of wish that they had gotten married. Yeah. Um, and his experience in the army, mm -hmm. unbelievable. Right. The trench foot when he's going through what he went through for those last four Coming. miles. It's oh uh, yeah, you haven't got. It's oh, yeah. just really incredible. Right. And it, he's not a privileged. I mean, he's privileged. Don't get me wrong. But what he's going through in this book shows. Yeah. His yeah. humanity. Yeah. Right. I agree. And I think for me, the thing that stuck out the most is how much his mother's death has affected everything, everything. in his everything. life. Right. And the fact that um, nobody helped him grieve that. I mean, yeah. he, his father came in, told him about it, and then he was right. alone in the room until nine o'clock the next morning with right. like no support from anybody. I mean, patted that's not him on normal. the leg and said, "Dear boy, right. darling, boy. darling boy, darling boy, darling boy." Yeah, and and which. Yes, that's got to be hard, like living in that and, and then having to deal with that on a regular, you know, day-to-day. -day. I mean, everybody obviously will grieve over, you know, the loss of somebody, you know, a parent. Mm -hmm. But but, but then having it in the spotlight, oh. you know, oh. in and out of everything that yeah. they do and not being allowed to, to, he talks about like how he cried and then he didn't cry, didn't cry. Mm -hmm. you know, and then he finally cried again and like, that was it. And it's, and it's it. well, how much they were trained, that's a, their culture, right? Right. You, know, you do not show emotion right. in any way, shape or form, which obviously we do free therapy here on Wednesdays. Like, I feel like Dr. Laura Sanders, if she was reading this book, say, oh, no, no, we needed to name some feelings there. We <laughs> sure. needed to talk it out. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Let's talk about the disappearance of his mother. The right. disappearance. He yeah. doesn't really believe she died. For many years. For many years. Yeah. Yes. Like, he just believes she disappeared to get out of the spotlight, which I think is a one way of a coping mechanism. Yeah. 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 It was yeah. definitely a trauma response. And he said Will did the same thing for a long time, but mm -hmm. then Will, you know, more and more, like, was, you know, dealing with the reality of it, but he wasn't. And then I, what I also love is that the, the secretary that was hired mm -hmm. for them really didn't allow him to look at the nastiest pictures yes. that yes. they had. Exactly. You know, I think looking at any of them had to have been just, you know, Terrible, yeah, terrible. You know, and really, you know, just emotional. But but he really held back and didn't. And what a great thing for that person to have done for him. Exactly. To I really have looked out for him well, in the way that he should have been looked out for his whole childhood. Right, Quickly right. before we move on, let's talk about his relationship with his brother. Not so great. I think that's really upsetting for me too. I kind of wanted to believe that that wasn't a thing, you know, right. like that I people mean, just dramatize that, but it really it's not great. And when it, he got it's to hard the to hear. When he got to Eaton and yes. there, there was all so this dysfaction. That he and, didn't, yeah, exactly. This is where I have to say though, like there's two sides that, to every story. Well, no, and not even just that, but I think that that's also very like a lot of siblings will do at that age at that age maybe right. not so extreme mm. and thank goodness my daughters didn't do that but but I do know a family where they joke now they're like oh yeah he ignored me in the hallways and he so I don't know that that's that's you, more sibling yeah, rivalry right as and like the to... bedroom sizes you know it's funny because I was talking about this book yesterday with someone and they said well I got the smaller bedroom and my sibling had the, the bigger bedroom when they moved out I moved in and it, right yeah he, right. so yeah. some of that I feel like maybe we didn't need to get all that detail like if he's trying to make a point some of that is just typical 
sibling rivalry. Not that I don't feel bad for him, right. but what's our next assignment? You know. Okay, so part two, it's um, from one sixteen through two sixty four. Okay. So we're gonna like I think we're gonna really get into the military history and and how it comes out of that. And uh, Friday, March third is when I'm on again. So read part two before Friday, March third. Excellent. And we will discuss Loving it. Loving the book. Loving yeah. the book. All right, we have two and a half minutes. Let's two and a half to books. Valentine's Day. Valentine's okay. Day. So, you know, little kids, I mean, they have to get their Valentines, right? So the adorable love escargot. He's going to a Snailentine's party. <laughs> or so he thinks he is. And he's getting all ready. And he gets the, the reader very involved in what he should wear and do. Then we've got this adorable joke book for the kid that doesn't want to read a book but wants to laugh. So what, go ahead. What did the frog wear to the Valentine's dance? I don't, don't know. know. Open toed shoes. <laughs> <laughs> so cute little That's jokes perfect. in there. You gotta keep this book for some new jokes on the I gotta keep this right. It's kinda like your dad joke, you know, book, but it's adorable for kids. Um, I also just want to talk about this this series, Wish, which is put out by Scholastic. These are for tweens. These are like your first crush. So it's a little fun story, but it's very innocent, like somebody's cute and they have a little crush on them. So there's Hedge Over Heels, This Is How I Roll, and there's a couple others. It's a really nicely done um, group of books. It's okay. a imprint of called Wish. And then for 14 and up, so six times we almost kissed and one time we do. So this oh, is for the young adult I love that, that goes a little bit further of, you know, into more of a romancy thing. You know, I didn't have my first kiss until I was 26. Really? 26. My okay. first meaningful kiss. Wow. Six yeah. times you almost kissed and then... <laughs> yeah. Six times I tried to kiss and then <laughs> once I did. There you go. It's a whole nother time. Can I just say one more thing about the, the spare book? Yeah. I, I, and I don't know if you know the answer to this. He talks about his struggles in school and this, but I don't, I, maybe he got help, it's a ghost writer. It's very well written, I Oh, would there's say. a ghost writer. Oh, yeah. totally. And, and oh, actually, and that. it's in there, you know, J.R. Moringer, who okay. actually is a fabulous author. Right. He it's wrote very well um, Tender Bar, and he wrote Sutton, amazing books. Okay. Um, so J.R. is a good friend of his and is definitely okay. the writer. Because it's very well written. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. This was really fun. Yeah, yeah it looks great. So, yeah, this is really good. Yeah, like four of us I hope the audience it. is enjoying the book as much as we are. And let us know on our Facebook page or Twitter or Instagram what you think about the book Spare. We'd love to hear from you. Yeah. Uh, in Books and Booze event Thursday, February 9th, 6 p.m. You can go to RJ Julia's and have a little event. That sounds like a lot of fun. Yeah. Thanks, Lori. Thank Thanks, you. Melissa. Thanks, guys. Have yeah. a great day, everybody. I would assume that four is next.